Hello, my name is John Fisher, and I'll present the joint work with Daniel Knatt, uh, Michael Katz, and Jörg Hoffman, uh, titled Custom Design of FDR Encodings, the case of Red Blood Planning. Uh, planning tasks are usually defined PDDL, but most planners use finite domain representation. The translation process usually goes from PDDL to strips, and then strips to PDR. In this work, we focused on the part uh, that translates strips into FDR. <coughs> FDR encoding of uh, plain tasks are usually consider, considered to be given and fixed, but they can actually impact performance of uh, different plain techniques. And here we focused on optimization of FDR encoding that better fits a uh, uh, particular plain technique called uh, replic planning. Uh, technical details are in the paper. So in this presentation, I will rather focus on uh, uh, an intuition why we need a different FDI encoding of uh, the point tasks. The most simple translation from strips to FDR is a binary encoding. Uh, uh, so, for example, if you have this transportation domain with uh, facts um, describing the tra track is at a certain location, or package is at a certain location, or package is loaded in the track, and this operator uh, saying that if a track and package is at the same uh, location, then it can be loaded into <coughs> into track. We can simply create one variable for each fact with domain 0 and 1, meaning that uh, the fact is not set in the state or it is set in the state. And the operator is, uh, uh, the translation of the operator is also straightforward. <coughs> if you want to create a more concise representation, uh, then we need a state invariant called um, test group. Uh, Mutas group is a set of facts out of which maximally one can be true in any regional state. So, for example, in our transportation domain, we have uh, two Mutas group. Uh, the first one describing the, uh, that the track can be at most at one location at a time. The second one describing that package can be either in one of the locations or loaded into a track and let's say we have the same uh, operator. Um, we can directly translate each of these uh, uh, test groups into variables. And uh, again, the translation of the operator is straightforward. Notice that uh, the plain task is more concise, not only because we have fewer variables, but also uh, in the case of this operator, we don't need to directly translate the delete effect because it's implicitly encoded in the value switching um, semantics of variable V2. The transportation the example was uh, simple because the mutas groups were disjoint, but uh, we can have a mutas group that share the same uh, facts. For example, in Boxford, uh, we have facts like this that can be split into uh, mutase groups. The first one uh, uh, saying that the gripper can the, has empty hand or it can hold one of the blocks. Another set of mutase groups describing that uh, either block is held by a gripper or it is placed on some uh, other block or it is placed on, on the table. And uh, another set of Montez groups describing that something can be placed on top of uh, the block, or the block is held by a gripper, or something is placed on top of the block. Now, as you can see, we have, uh, a, for example, fact hold A that is part of three different Montez groups, uh, or a fact on AB that is part of two different Montez groups. Um, so now we have to uh, choose how to. Uh, translate these motifs into variables. And for example, if we start with the first one, translate it directly into variable, uh, then we don't need to encode hold A, hold B, and hold C again, uh, because it is already encoded in the variable V1. So we can avoid it in different uh, motifs groups. And we can, in this manner, continue and uh, encode the second mutex group with the second variable. Here we need to add an additional um, value of none of those, meaning that none of these uh, facts uh, are set in a, in a state. And again, since we uh, encode it on AB and on AC in this variable, we don't need to encode it uh, anymore. 
having to continue this matter. Uh, what we also can do is uh, take a mutex group and split it into multiple variables. For example, we can decide that uh, we will split this mutex group into two variables, v4 and v5. The first one holding uh, corresponding to the effects on CA and on CB, and the second one corresponding to the effect on table C. Uh, all of these possible encodings are semantically equivalent um, in a sense that they all have the same set of plans, but they also have the same set of uh, paths applicable on the initial state and the same set of um, eligible states, although they are differently encoded. Uh, but um, uh, some planning techniques uh, use um, some kind of structural analysis of the planning task uh, that are based on syntactic rules uh, and there the, uh, uh, the uh, encoding of the planning task can matter. Um, for example, uh, we have the standard notion of causal graph, uh, which is a directed graph of um, a directed graph where each vertex corresponds to a variable and uh, there is an edge from one, one variable to another if there is a causal link between them induced by some operator and different encodings can differ for example on this kind of structure here's another example um, uh, where we have uh, six facts a b c and x y z and we have six operators uh, three of them switching value from A to B, B to C, and C to A, but only if the fact X is set, and another three operators changing the value from X to Y, Y to Z, and Z to X, but only if the fact C is set, uh, and changing from Z to X also changes changes uh, the fact from C to B. Uh, now, uh, we can find uh, two different text groups in this point as A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. And we can decide to translate them directly into variables. Uh, the translation of the operators will be, again, straightforward. And we will end up with the causal graph with two vertices because we have uh, two variables and it is fully connected. Now, if you would want to select an acyclic subgraph of causal graph, and I will get into it why we would want to do that in a minute. So if we want to select an acyclic subgraph, then we can select either V1 or V2, um, each corresponding to three facts from the original strip splunning task. <clears throat> However, we can uh, choose to encode this splunning task differently. Um, we can split the multiple group ABC into two variables. Um, and replace the variable v1 with variable va corresponding to the fact a and variable bc corresponding to fact bc and keep the variable v2. Uh, the uh, translation of the operators is, um, well, it seems a little bit more complicated, but the algorithm is again straightforward and we will end up with different uh, causal graph. Of course, we have three variables, so we have three vertices in the causal graph, but uh, here we can, uh, if we want to uh, find an acyclic subgraph of this causal graph, now we can select variables V2 and VA. And now we cover not just three facts in this uh, acyclic uh, part of causal graph, but four facts, uh, that is X, Y, Z, and A. And the reason is that we were able to separate the, the part uh, causing the cyclicity of the uh, causal graph, namely uh, the facts B and C. And in this manner, we can also manipulate, uh, for example, domain transition graph of the planning tasks and so on. So in our paper, we focused on red black planning. In red black planning, we have uh, two kinds of variables. Red variables has uh, value accumulating semantics, uh, relax or relax semantics. And black variables has value switching semantics. It is a standard semantics of the variables in FDR. Um, in particular, we uh, focused on a certain poly polynomial fragment of a black planning uh, that requires that 
the causal graph of black variables is acyclic and uh, domain transitions graphs of black variables are uh, invertible. Um, our contribution is that we found a relation between facts on a strips level that translate into the causal relation uh, in uh, between variables in the resultant FDR and similarly for the transitions within domain transitions graphs. And um, we formulated uh, the optimization of the translation process uh, using integer linear programming that can give us the best possible encoding for a given objective function. I've unfortunately also found out that we actually don't know the best possible objective function for this um, uh, particle planning technique. Um, um, but we can, it, this can also motivate the future research in this matter. So uh, we compared baseline, which is uh, default encoding and some standard uh, painting strategy. And, uh, and we tried to uh, kinds of objective functions. The first one maximizes maximizes number of black facts uh, in the resulting planning task. And the second one uses conflicts in the relax plan obtained by HFF heuristics on the uh, strip plan task. Um, we also compared the so-called Oracle that picks the best uh, encoding uh, for uh, each planning task. This, of course, is just a theoretical concept, um, but it shows that if we knew how to select the best possible uh, encoding what would be the, uh, the result of, uh, of this process. Um, so on the scatter plots below you can see a uh, comparison of the number of black facts, that is a uh, number of facts contained in the black variables. And on the left you can see that if we maximize, uh, maximize the number of facts, uh, number of black facts, then uh, we can increase the number of this number significantly or by orders of magnitude. But if you look on the right, where we compare baseline to the Oracle, you can see that the best uh, encoding for blueprint actually is not to maximize number of black facts. Here is the comparison of recovery, and you can see again that uh, first of all uh, the uh, the encoding of blueprint task matters. We have we are getting different results for different encoding. And you can see that uh, if we knew how to select the best possible encoding, we'd be able to increase the, uh, uh, the coverage significantly. Uh, so we are hoping that this will motivate for the research in um, what makes the FDR encoding uh, better or worse than some other for uh, reflect planning. So to summarize, uh, FDR encoding of point tasks is usually considered to be fixed. Uh, but there can be uh, different FDR economy that is more suitable for some particle planning techniques. We focused in this paper specifically on red black planning and, uh, and showed that uh, the performance of the planner can be improved uh, by different by choosing different FDR encoding of the planning task. Uh, thank you for your attention.